Now that we have this line chart that I created in a previous video about transforming commands, I want to show you how easy it is to create a report or add this to a dashboard and create your own dashboard. All right, so what we're gonna do, so we have our search in here, we have this, we want to know how many times a failed login has happened by user and then break it up into a span of you know each day. So once we have this, we have this going on, we can just come up here to save as, we're gonna save it as a report. Now, this report, you can do a lot of options with. You can pick the time range, you can set up description, you can then you know set the contents. I'm gonna leave it as an area chart, uh, and then I'm just gonna put you know, users failed. I'm going to save it. And now I have some advanced permissions or advanced stuff I can do to it. I can set the permissions where I can just lock it down to where only I can see it or only the app can see it. Um, we're not going to mess with that right now. I can actually set this up as a scheduled report from this point. So like I want to know these every day so I can schedule this to run at, you know, one o'clock in the morning, every morning. And then whenever I get into the office, I have this report ready to go. I can also set up acceleration on this. Uh, which will also set it up as a schedule search uh, and then run in the background continuously. That's not correct. Ignore that. But I can set acceleration. I'm going to go over this again. So from here, you can see that we have uh, some additional settings we can make. So I can set the permissions so I can lock this down to just me or share it to my team or, you know, on an app or share it globally within the Splunk ecosystem here. Um, I can then set up a schedule for this thing to run every day. I can set up on a cron job. Uh, I guess that acceleration. I can embed this, uh, you know, embed this into another report. Uh, and I am, I'm going to say continue editing. All right. Now I can re edit this. So I've already saved the report. Now I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I don't really need to know by day. I can do it by a week or I can do it by two days because that's the kind of data I have in here. All right, so I've made a change to this and I can just click save and I can just go back in here make sure all these are what I want and then click save, save it again. I can also go in and re-edit these things. Now you can click add the dashboard here and, and go pick a dashboard to add it to, but we haven't created a dashboard yet. So let's just exit out of this. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click in dashboards. Um, I will be giving the tour right now. Thank you. Here's a list of dashboards. They just kind of come with, you know, Splunk, Splunk 8X here. We're going to go up here on the right, create a new dashboard. We're going to go through this. We're going to give this uh, a fancy name. Fancy dashboard. Um, and this is going to have the fanciest of data. Now, <clears throat> I can share this to, you know, the same way I can share this to other people in the app, or I can keep it private. So, you know, maybe not everybody else needs to know how many times the login failures are happening. Let's just, you know, keep that to me and my team here. So I'm going to keep it private. Uh, Dashboard Studio, that is another video for another time. We're going to go to classic dashboards here. We're going to click create. So we can go in here and we can add a panel to start, uh, you know, click an input. This will give you options for like selecting timestamps, um, you know, other, other advanced usage. These, you know, it takes, um, takes some time to get used to what the inputs can be, but we're, we're going for very basic here. So we're going to add a panel and we're going to click new from report. So here we see the reports that have been created and shared to everybody or the reports that I've created and shared only to us. So we're going to click users failed. We're going to add this to the dashboard and it's going to pull it up right there. Now I got other reports too. So let's see what we got. Uh, errors in the last 24 hours. You know what? Let's add that here too. That'd be nice to find. Ah, no errors. That's good. So now we have this dashboard here. We can click save. That's our fancy fanciest of dashboards. Clearly you can see the elegant line chart that I have here. Now, if we ever wanted to make changes to this in the future, we can come here and then as, as the dashboard owner or as somebody who has uh, 
right access to this. I can click edit. And, you know, I always like the dark theme. So let's let's go ahead and do that, I'll apply that. Oh, I think that really pops now. Uh, we're gonna go back into edit here. Now, if you're an advanced user, uh, you know, you can go in and, and just edit the source. So this is all simple XML. Um, it's been around for a while. There's a lot of documentation out there, officially at dev.splunk.com. Um, it's not necessary to know it because you can get away with just adding stuff in from the GUI. Uh, so this is good to know if you want to do some really uh, advanced stuff. There's You can even go even deeper into it. But for us today, we're just going to stick to the UI section of this. And we're going to add another panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick what kind of thing I want to visualize here. And we're just going to create one from scratch. So you don't have to always save a report and then go in here and, and do it. So you know what? I'm going to do a single value. I want to know the count of events total in the index of main. So now I know that all time is going to be the only way I pick up this data. Uh, we're going to name this total count of indexed events. T stats count where index equals main by index. Now, if you wanted to see if this search will run, we could test it out right here. Uh, as you can see here, it did run. Here's the count. Now, let's try this again. Now I have only the field that I need. So we can use that. And because that field is a single value, it will feed into the single value dashboard visualization. Now, so that takes up a lot of room. So let's let's put this up here next to this one. You know what? That takes up a lot of room too. So we can actually go three wide here and just drag and drop it. And there we go. Now we know all this stuff from a glance. Let's put this over here because I like to have that thing centered. Uh, and we are set to go. We can click save. And boom, look at that dashboard. Look at that. That is a fancy dashboard. You know what? I want to change something. Okay, so this visualization over here is nice and all. I really do like the single value. It's probably one of my favorites for some reason. Just easy and clean. Uh, so we can either adjust the visualization here, which I'm not going to do because I'm going to keep it, but I want to make it look better. So I'll bring this over here. I'm not going to add a caption, but I am going to add a color. Oh, look at that. We can set a thresholded range here. So, so if you had like failed servers and you wanted to really show that if a server, more than three servers are failed, we have a problem. So we'll make that count, you know, three to max. So let's, let's do that. We'll just go off that. So we have, we're going to add a range here. So we have three ranges here. So if we have one, zero to one, zero to one servers failed. That, that'll be a green, uh, one to two, you know, if there's two servers failed, that's going to be a yellow. And then anything above two is going to be a red. And this will just, you know, easily bring our eyes to the attention that there's a red number. I need to look into that. You can also set some precision settings. Uh, it gives you a little bit extra way to, to kind of configure it. So, it looks better for you, but for us, this is all we really need right here. I'm going to save that visualization and boom. Now we both know that this isn't the number of servers failed. That was an example I used. This is just the number of, of indexed events, uh, so, which is obviously well above the number two. It's just good to see that visual, how it works, how it pops, uh, and kind of get an idea of, you know, the little customizations you can do. Uh, there's way more stuff you can do in here. Um, you can, 
you know, go in and add some of your own CSS. Uh, you can also use some JavaScript in here. But, you know, all of that stuff is, is pretty advanced. I'm not going to get into it because that is not what this is about. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm not TED. <laughs>